attack has just occurred. The first hours of shelter occupation are characterized by confusion, rumors, noise. Small groups gather. They discuss their situation, their new and strange location. This, however, is not the case with all shelter occupants. Some withdraw, freeze, become a member of no group. But there is one common value, one pervading thought, self-preservation self-protection, self. Social values must return before individuals will function as a group. Luckily, the needs to achieve this are few. Organization, leadership, recreation, training, empathy with fellow shelter occupants. But these needs are led by the need for information. The quality of the shelter's information program will have a great effect on the success of the survival effort. Your attention, please. Your attention, please. All right, quiet down, please. Come on, hold it down. Let's listen to this. This is Governor Haynes. This is an official announcement. The nation has sustained a nuclear attack. Luckily, only a few of our cities have been hit, and our citizens are now entering into shelters. If we stay in our shelters, we will survive. Your local authorities, We'll give you reports as they are received. In the meantime, remember, stay in your shelter. Positive information is reassuring. To get it, a radio is desirable. Providing shelters with radios is the responsibility of the community. But although it gives the big picture, the radio is an impersonal thing. What about our town, our neighborhood, our home? May I have your attention? Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention for just a moment? Uh, you've heard our governor. Uh, we have other information that there's been no heavy damage in our area. So if some of your family is not in this shelter, be reassured. Fill out these registration forms. It'll help us to locate your families. That's all. Evidence of informed leadership helps to establish control of the shelter quickly and to hold it. A major source of information for management is the control center. The control center provides the manager with operations information not given over the radio. Some of this operations information may also be used as general information to further inform the shelter occupants at the discretion of the manager. Because information is so important, the shelter's procedure for handling it should be organized in an information program and made a part of the shelter operations plan. It should contain instructions to help others conduct the information program even if the manager and his staff don't make it to their shelter. The information program requires capable personnel to form an information team. Its leader could be a newsman or public relations expert, an educator or the like. The number and qualifications of his assistants will vary with the size and layout of the shelter. All should be chosen for their understanding of people. Once he feels safe in a well-managed shelter, a shelter occupant's concern for self quickly gives way to concern about his immediate family. The information team should be prepared to cope with this demanding need. Your attention, please. We're in contact with Control Center downtown. They report that all shelters in Fairview have been occupied according to plan. All children have gone safely into their school shelter. They urge that we stay in our shelter. Reassuring news about family can help draw distraught individuals out of themselves. Supplying information helps them start back to a normal condition of social awareness and responsibility. They will form spontaneous groups to
to talk out the situation, relieving pressure. But these groups lack purpose and organization. They must be given more information to help management build a close-knit shelter society for survival. As soon as possible, post a public announcement schedule. List the times that you intend to announce news from both outside and inside the shelter. This is similar to regular newscasts. It will give shelter occupants regular high points to look forward to. Urgent announcements, of course, should be made immediately. Just as in normal times, issuing the news is a critical responsibility of trust. The timely release of news and the preparation of the occupants to accept bad news when necessary are the responsibility of the shelter manager and his staff. Your attention, please. Your attention, please. As we expected, fallout is moving over the city. Radiation levels have not been determined as yet. Another information problem concerns the issuance of bad news. The public has as much right to know the unpleasant as the cheerful knowing just how to deliver it and how to cope with possible reaction is the essence of a good information program. If the manager believes that the effect on morale is serious, he must be prepared to offset this with positive instructions and information. The manner in which information is given is extremely important, calmly rather than excitedly, authoritative rather than confused. Giving both Good news and bad, keeping shelter occupants informed of outside events, asking for ideas, confiding serious problems, will gradually draw individuals into a group with a growing morale and a willingness to cooperate. But as the group spirit develops, there will be ever-present forces that tend to divide it again. One of these is a familiar information problem, false rumors. rumor going around. Some of them want to sleep in the other half of the room tonight because they say there's less radiation over there. Well, that figures. All of them tried to sleep over here last night. The rumor then was that only this end of the shelter was safe. The well, rumors are canceling each other out. All right, let's have Charlie set up a demonstration to prove that both rumors are just scuttlebutt. When they have the correct information, we won't have a problem. After some time, there will be opportunities to use the program and communications facilities to help improve morale. There may be time to transmit information that will have a personal meaning to shelter occupants, perhaps to confirm the good health of family members who are in other shelters. Important morale-boosting information of this sort should be compiled and transmitted during the slack hours to avoid confusing or delaying important official operations and general messages. Another information technique that helps increase the group spirit is to share personal news with the whole shelter. There will be many opportunities. Well, that about wraps it up for now. If there's anyone who has anything that he'd like Well, looks like we do have another bit of news. The Webbers have an anniversary today. Their 30th. Oh. Congratulations. <laughs> when the routine of existence has at last been established in the shelter and news becomes repetitious, life may become boring. Shelter occupants will ask, what do we do now? The information program should include ways to help solve the problem. It's comparatively easy to handle an individual, give them responsibilities. But for the group as a whole, the answer is organized instruction to further inform and orient the shelter occupants. The program should include talks on preserving health, discussion periods, safety instruction, special activities for adults and children, and other activities that underscore the need for tolerance, cooperation, and submergence of personal interest for the good of the group. If possible, personnel needed to direct these activities should be designated pre-attack from the community ranks of trained specialists. If more are required, they can be selected with the help of the registration forms from among the shelter occupants, school teachers, recreation and athletic directors, professional people and church leaders. 
the total effect of their instruction should be to improve shelter life and to prepare survivors for the post-shelter world. This, indeed, will be an important part of the information program, preparing for the post-shelter world. On those who survive will fall a great responsibility, re-establishing a normal way of life. How well that is achieved will be influenced by the quality of instruction provided in public shelters. So, in brief, the shelter information program informs, diverts, and orients shelter occupants during the long days of confinement. It produces what is vital to shelter functioning and management, an informed population. And it does something more. Thank you, Doctor. <coughs> and now, finally, to the matter that we've all been thinking about, just when can we all leave the shelter? It has been several days. Radiation fallout has decayed, but there still is some radiation present. So as you know, the staff does not believe that anyone should go out. But some of you do. Now again, you realize that we don't want to hold anyone in the shelter against his will. So before you make your final decision, it might be wise to hear how some of the others feel. Can I say so something? Well, yes, of course, Mr. Mills, go ahead. Well, I only got on the information team pretty recently. To be honest with all of you, maybe I just got on any team pretty recently. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, when I got here right after, I was kind of shook. I guess we all were. I didn't know what was happening. I felt closed in. I know none of us did at first, but it really got to me. Sure helped finding out about the kids, though. <laughs> I got a couple myself. And the things were being taken care of. Look, what I really want to say is I want to go along with whatever these people, the manager and the staff, say. We can make a big mistake by going out Here is the something extra that a good information program gives. It helps replace self-concern and disorientation with concern for others, interest in the group, responsibility. More than individuals will survive in the fallout shelter. With a good program, society will survive too. <laughs>